Welcome to Endless Learning Training Series The Membrane-Based Desalination Technology. In this video, we will study about RO unit startup procedure, manual startup operation and auto sequence. Before startup of RO unit, all pretreatment system and water quality conditions should be satisfied. RO train is started up according to a detailed sequence, and also this sequence can be either be performed by the operator or by a RO train startup sequence implemented in the DCS. RO train startup procedures during startup of RO unit care to be taken to prevent water hammer from crushing the membrane modules to prevent water hammer damage to the membranes, the concentrate and permeate valves should be wide open at startup. A low pressure flush to purge air from the membranes is always recommended before a high pressure startup. The permeate valve should always be open to drain during this flush to prevent damage to the membranes. After the air has been purged from the system RO feed pump should be started slowly, increasing the pressure at a rate no greater than 10 psi per second at any time. If a variable frequency drive, VFD, is used, it can be adjusted to start up slowly. If not VFD then feed control valve should start open slowly until the desired recovery in feed pressure is reached, making sure that the pressure increases at an acceptable rate. The shims and thrust ring will minimize or prevent movement of the modules and to prevent damage to the membranes during startup and shutdown of the RO system. Ultimate objective of any startup scenario is to maintain the same pressure rise speed of 0.5 bar per second on the RO membranes from 0 to 70 bars. RO unit, control system, seawater after pretreatment is feed to RO unit with required flow and pressure, V1 is RO inlet valve. V2 is PX inlet valve, V3 is permeate outlet valve, V4 is permeate drain valve, V5 is feed vent valve, V6 is brine vent valve, PT1 is HPP suction pressure, PT2 is HPP discharge pressure, PT3 is brine pressure, FT1 HPP inlet flow. FT2 LPPX inlet flow, FT3 is HPPX outlet flow, FCV1 is feed control valve, FCV2 is brine control valve, HP is high pressure pump, BP is booster pump. Startup sequence is valid only if all the system, pumps, PX, pipes, etc. is vented properly and ready for operation. Startup sequence. Step 1. Make sure either the permeate outlet valve V3 or permeate drain valve V4 is open. Startup sequence. Step 2. Open the RO inlet valve V1. Startup sequence. Step 3. Open fully the feed control valve. Wait for 5 minutes and allow for proper venting of the system. Listen to any air bubbles coming from the feed vent line or brine vent line. Startup sequence. Step 4. After 5 minutes. Open PX inlet valve V2 and set PX low pressure flow control valve FCV 2S set at approximately 120 meter cube per hour by opening valve about 20 to 30%. Startup sequence, 
Step 5. Close brine vent valve V6. Startup sequence. Step 6. Start booster pump BP at a frequency given in the HMI approximately 25% or 25 Hz. Startup sequence. Step 7. Adjust the flow to approximately 75% of the set point by increasing the booster pump frequency slowly. Startup sequence. Step 8. Start closing the feed control valve FCV1 to the starting set point given in the HMI, approximately 17%. Startup sequence, step 9, when the feed control valve reaches a position of 30%, close the feed vent valve V5. Startup sequence, step 10, when the feed control valve reaches a position below 17%, then start high pressure pump. Startup sequence, Step 11. Start opening slowly the feed control valve FCV1 within approximately 1 minute. The minimum flow of 60 meter cube per hour shall be reached. Startup sequence. Step 12. The low pressure LP. Brine control FCV1 downstream of the pressure exchanger bank, PX, shall be adjusted to the control parameter set point, to full load equals 276 meter cube per hour slowly ramped, LPPX inlet flow. Startup sequence, step 13. To establish the high pressure loop of the pressure exchanger, PX increased the frequency of the booster pump to adjust to HPPX flow of FT3 control parameter set point slowly to full load equals 276 meter cube per hour. After keeping above 100 cubic meters per hour for at least two minutes. Startup sequence, step 14. Slowly open the feed control valve FCV1 and watch the feed pressure PT2. The increase of membrane feed pressure shall be less than 10 psi per second and very slow ramp opening. RO train control panel, parameter FT1 set point. Startup sequence, step 15. Readjust the low pressure flow and high pressure flow of the pressure exchangers during increasing of the HPP pump flow to operating conditions. Startup sequence, step 16, check permeate quality at the connectivity instrument and select the permeate valve accordingly. Startup sequence, step 17, High conductivity, the RO permeate shall be drained with drain valve V4. Startup sequence, step 18, if the conductivity is acceptable, then first open outlet valve V3. Startup sequence, step 19, when the outlet valve V3 is fully opened only then close the drain valve V4. Note, at all times one permeate valve V3 or V4 must be open. First open one valve fully, only then close the other valve. Startup sequence, step 20, train is in full operation when the pressure PT2 reaches 40 bar, then RO control loop working according to set point parameter. Automatically. RO control loop, there are three control loop, one permeate flow, flow control, next is PX low pressure loop, LPPX inlet flow, flow control, third is PX high pressure loop, HPPX outlet flow, flow control. RO control loop one, permeate flow, 
flow control loop, permeate flow rate set by high pressure pump suction flow FT1 with help of FCV1. RO control loop 2, PX low pressure, LPPX inlet flow, flow control loop, LP inlet flow meter, FT2 set by discharge flow control valve, FCV2. RO control loop 3rd, PX high pressure loop, HPPX outlet flow, flow control loop, HPPX flow rate set by VFD booster pump, with booster inlet flow meter. RO system operation, the plant operation parameters have to be adjusted to changing requirements and conditions. RO plants are usually operated at constant flow and recovery. Changes in membrane flux are compensated by adjusting the feed pressure, decreasing temperature and increase in feed water salinity can be compensated by increasing the feed pressure. Once the maximum pressure is reached, a further decrease results in lower productivity. In a seawater reverse osmosis, SWRO, the recovery rate or conversion rate is the ratio of membrane permeate flow rate to the membrane feed flow rate, mostly plant conversion ratio will be 40%, this means that 40% of the total inlet flow to RO train will become permeate water and 60% of the total inlet flow to RO train will become brine. Thank you for watching this video.